palsy is a relatively common condition affecting roughly two in a thousand people. Uh, and it results from perinatal damage to any of the motor pathways. There are different types depending on which pathway is affected. So for example, if the corticospinal tract is affected, that creates spastic cerebral palsy. Whereas if uh, the basal ganglia are affected by this early damage, uh, it produces an athetoid cerebral palsy. If the cerebellum is affected by this early damage, it, produ it can produce an ataxic cerebral palsy. Whichever uh, type it is, this is a permanent condition that is not progressive. So it's not going to get, it's not going to change the, the um, effects of this condition on a person's life may, may alter, may, may, uh, may change through time, but the actual uh, condition will not change. So what we're going to do here is look at spastic uh, cerebral palsy, which is the most common. And this can occur, it can occur with a, uh, an, an anoxia, a lack of, lack of oxygen up to the motor cortex. But oftentimes it, it's a damage to, the, to deep white matter that contains corticospinal tract or corticobulbar tract fibers. And the severity can be extremely mild to debilitating. So a mild case of the most common fact, uh, type of, of spastic cerebral palsy is in fact very mild. It's a scissor gate. It's where the two, uh, the, the legs um, are, are brought in or adducted in so that the knees touch together. Um, and and it, 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 the scissor gate works, it just looks a little bit different from how most of us walk. Um, and the severity can go to a place that's more um, disabling so that a person may be, for example, dependent on a wheelchair, dependent on, not, uh, and also not able perhaps not able to feed themselves or not easily able to feed themselves. So, so it can really um, vary in, in um, severity. Now, I'm going to show you one possible mechanism that has been proposed for how cerebral palsy works. And this is not how it works in every case, but this is one way that is thought to give rise to many of the spastic cerebral palsy cases. And that is, under normal circumstances, Motor neurons in the spinal cord and, and brainstem are innervated by cells um, from both sides of motor cortex. So both co contralaterally innervated and ipsilaterally inter innervated. And then with time, early in development, say the first year, um, there is pruning of, the, of, the, of this innervation. And pruning is a common developmental uh, phenomenon where there's exuberant synapse formation and then there's a peeling back of the ones that don't work so well. So put out a lot, see which ones work, take regress, kill off the ones that don't work as well. And so normally what happens is that these ipsilateral projections, the projections from ipsilateral motor cortex to motor neurons, regress, they fall back, and now in the normal adult, in the healthy adult, the contralateral motor cortex will give rise to um, innervation. Will, only the contralateral uh, motor cortex will innervate motor neurons. In this proposed mechanism of cerebral palsy, the, the pruning doesn't occur. And so now, in the adult, there are two signals that are, are um, provided to this motor neuron. And it's not just that there are two signals to it, but that th this, as it turns out, this produces changes both in the motor neuron and even in the muscle. So now the, these, are diff these are different beasts. They're, um, and uh, so this is thought to be the fundamental problem in a big chunk of, of cases of cerebral palsy. Now, as we saw, as we've seen with other uh, conditions of the nervous system, a condition does not define a person. And I, I want to emphasize that with, in the case of cerebral palsy, 
Uh, this has absolutely no, uh, it, it does not need to be accompanied by any intellectual disability at all. Um, and uh, it doesn't have to be accompanied by, by a, a um, it, it doesn't define a person's life. And I just want to show you uh, a, a former um, MOOC student of mine who has a great life um, and has cerebral palsy. And, and this is Laura Emerson. She's a happy person. Uh, and I'm, I'm happy to be her friend. Um, so just think about um, uh, this is a condition. She, Laura needs help. She needs assistance. She needs some, uh, some uh, she needs assistive care, but it certainly does not de define who she is. She's an extremely um, loving, fun, interesting person. In the final, uh, in the final video, we're going to look at the control of motor cortex by higher motor areas.